Okay. Um, let's start by reading Psalm 103, um, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So the psalmist is saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. You know, and he's saying, Everything that is within me, bless his holy name. Uh, another verse is uh, Psalm 34 and verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Right, And um, no matter what season, no matter what is happening, says, I will bless the Lord. And um, that I will is so very important because it's a choice, it's a decision, which involves our thinking, which involves um, our mind. And uh, and rightfully, he says, my soul will make its boast in the Lord. Right after he says, you know, I will bless the Lord at all times, he says, my soul will make its boast in the Lord. And so also uh, for us, uh, even as we read through, we see that um, you know out of our emotions we bless the Lord as well, right? And also despite our emotions, you know, um, it says bless the Lord, O my soul. And uh, of course, the soul realm, we might be going through ups and downs. Um, so Psalm 34 he declares, "I will bless the Lord at all times." And then he says, my soul will boast in the Lord, which means that uh, there could be other things in the soul which try to boast, but my soul will boast in the Lord. My soul will magnify, uh, lift up, and make big things of the Lord. And um, so just wanted to remind us of that, that um, we bless the Lord when we have, a, you know, we have ample opportunities to bless and praise and give thanks and and maybe do that with our soul with our emotions and thoughts and everything and uh, and maybe also make a conscious choice to bless the lord amen so why don't we why don't we just pray right now and uh, take some time to just bless the lord right praise him um talk to him thank him magnify his name and uh, uh, magnify his truth above everything else Right. So let's do that. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We lift up your name. We magnify God, your name above everything else, Lord. Yes, Lord, we, we declare that you are the highest one, that there is no one higher. Lord, your word is the truth, and there is nothing, no other substitute, Lord. Lord, we, we do declare that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, Lord, we thank you for that exclusive claim, O oh God. There can be nothing else, O oh God, that is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, Lord, we praise you. We bless your name. We give you thanks, Father God. And Lord, no matter what season we could be, Lord, no matter what kind of phase we could be, Lord, uh, going through, O oh God, um, Lord, we, as, as the psalmist says, we, we choose to bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, Lord, we, we give our... Uh, we make that decision, God, and we say, I will bless. We will bless. And Lord, even as we do that, we realize that we are proclaiming the truth of Father God. We are, Lord, bringing down every lie of the enemy. We are proclaiming the truth, O God. Yes, Father God, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name today, God. O oh, God, we lift up your name, Father God. Your praise will continually be in our lips, O oh God. Your praise will continually be in our lips, O oh Father God. We thank you that you are the one who heals all, O oh God, our diseases. You are the one who forgives all our iniquities, O oh Master. We thank you, Father God. You fill us with good things, O oh God. You fill us with good things. Yes, Master. We thank you. We bless your name. We are so glad that you are in our lives, Father God. We are so glad that, Lord, your presence makes a difference. Your word and your spirit, O oh God empowers us today god and cleanses us washes us refreshes us lord and um, yes master 
We thank you. We can do this today. We lift your name. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' matchless name. We pray. Amen. 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 Um, we've been studying about uh, staying whole, right? We've been looking at uh, how we can stay in that place of uh, wholeness, um, inner wholeness, and uh, and it's it's not something very difficult. It's not something you know. Uh, uh, it's not something impossible, right? And uh, we ha we we have this these scriptures. We have these principles and guidelines because it is possible and the word of god declares so right um so we look at we looked at three things last class um and um, we we're looking at the fourth one in order to stay emotionally whole which is to practice the power of forgiveness okay um now forgiveness we know uh, it blesses the other person and uh, as we see Forgiveness also releases us, does something uh, deep within us, uh, which sometimes we underestimate, right? Um, forgiveness releases us. Forgiveness uh, frees us. Um, and uh, forgiveness, when we forgive someone, we are also submitting to God. Right? What we see in, in the book of James, and uh, it says... Uh, Submit to God. This is the devil. You know, some of the things, some of the stubborn things in our lives, uh, some of the things that uh, recurring things in our lives, uh, you know, could be because of unforgiveness. Right? It says, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So when we submit, when we forgive, sorry. We are actually submitting to God. We are bringing ourselves under the authority of God, and uh, and we are releasing, you know, we are releasing ourselves from the prison of unforgiveness. We are releasing ourselves from the prison of bitterness. So, uh, so forgiving others, um, even as God in Christ forgives, right, or forgave. Ephesians four talks about that. God in Christ forgive. So that is the example that's modeled for us. Okay, and um, you know, as we, um, as born again believers, as we are renewing our mind, um, slowly, uh, you know, we are being we are being transformed into Christ likeness. You know, we are being changed uh, from one level of glory to another level of glory, right? And we are being transformed into His likeness. And this is another area which which needs transformation. Another area which needs transformation because um, uh, it's it's easy to talk about it, but we know that um, you know it is uh, it is something that our minds need to be renewed to, in order to practice, right? in order to say that yes, Lord, you know this is what it is. I I I release forgiveness. I refuse to hold on to my right to unforgiveness. Right, and like we said earlier, forgiveness does not mean that we agree and uh, you know we uh, condone whatever that person has done. Okay, whatever um, ill will the person or ill act, or whatever the person has done, said towards us, we're not we're not saying that that is right. Right, um, but all that we are saying is that uh, we are uh, forgiving, even though that person has done this, we are forgiving. We're not saying that person is correct in in doing that, uh, and that's one of the main things that that prevents us from forgiving. You know, if I forgive, that means that everything is fine. Right? If I forgive, that means that uh, um, I'm I'm saying okay to all that the person other person said or did, right? and uh, that person is justified in doing it. Well, the the truth is far from it. Right, uh, because when the Lord forgave us, that does not mean that what the, in His eyes that whatever we we did was correct. It's just that He is releasing us from the consequence of it. Right, He is uh, 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 like th that is what the cross um, declares over us. Right, but in human terms, when we forgive, you know, the other person will will probably go through the consequence of their action you know if it's something to do with justice uh something to do with um, 
uh, you know, any other for the cause of justice that needs to be done, uh, the person will go through it. But then we have forgiven. Right? We are saying that uh, no more are we holding this against the other person. Okay, uh, Ephesians 4, 32, or 31 and 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice or evil intent. Okay, so the list is bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, which is loud quarreling, and evil speaking. Let it be put away from you. Now, all this, the root of that is offense. Right, the root of all this bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor is offense. That our pride is hurt, and uh, there, there is, um, you know, we are holding on to that, the memory of that, and therefore that root gives rise to all these things. Uh, the fruit of that is, you know, the manifestation of bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and everything. So, um, so Paul's exhortation is: let it be put away from you. Like let it be put away from you and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay, so we uh, we need to do this. When we do this, we are being uh, made whole emotionally. We are being freed in our in our in the realm of our soul. Right? And all these negative emotions, which drain us, which drain the, uh, you know, drain us from walking confidently, which drain us from walking with joy and peace. Now, all these negative emotions, we actually put an end to it. We kill it. Right. In other words, we are crucifying the flesh because the flesh wants to be bitter. Right? The flesh is just asking permission. Uh, or sometimes it's 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 just it's not even asking permission. The flesh is just saying, okay, just I want to do this. Okay, just let me add this. I want to do this, and I want to carry this act. Right? The flesh wants to. Flesh is just screaming literally. But we need to put away uh, with all evil intent, you know, along with all evil intent of revenge, maybe. Uh, we need to put that away and be kind, tender hearted, forgiving. Be kind, tender hearted, and forgive. Every time we forgive, we are made whole. And, uh, and the thing is this every time we forgive, the hook that the enemy has in our lives, right? That, um, that space that the enemy has um, to create a further, bigger opening or a dwelling place. We are actually closing that. We are denying the enemy the space. We are denying the enemy the foothold um, in order to step into our lives. We are completely denying. So it actually does a lot of good for us uh, when we, if we, when we choose to forgive and when we, um, and when we actually forgive the person, right? So, so these four things are very important for us to stay emotionally whole. Okay. Um, any questions, any practical aspects, any questions before we move on to the next one? Okay. Any questions, Tom? Okay, uh, feel free to uh, put it on the chat. Yeah, yes, Jeffina. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So, so let's say you are forgiving someone, um, but then uh, there are moments that you still remember those things. So does it mean like you still didn't forgive them? Like if you see that person, uh, you may still remember those things. Mm. So sometimes I wonder whether I really forgive or not. Forgive the heart, yeah. So, yeah, so how you will know like you really forgive? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, uh, you know, forgiveness is... Um, is a continuous thing in the sense we uh, in an instant okay uh, okay this is how it starts you know um, it, it need not be so but i'm just just you know putting for the natural process um you know how it could actually work out you know it's okay we choose right we come to a we are so deeply hurt that emotionally we are unable to forgive okay we are uh, absolutely not able to forgive but then we make a choice we make a decision you know, just like the psalm is saying, 30, Psalm 34, I will right, bless at all times. Okay, The times are bad. Emotionally, we are down. We are not able to 
come to a place of you know even saying i forgive you or i forgive this person um uh, but then we make a choice what do we make the choice on based on uh, where, where, how do we make the choice based on the truth of God's word? Where, well, this is what God says, Ephesians 4.32, that I need to forgive the way God in Christ forgave. So he, that is a standard. So he forgave me even even before, even when I was an enemy of the cross. So, so I'm going to step in and forgive. Right? So, um, so we forgive, we make the choice, the decision, and we forgive. So emotionally, we may not feel anything right we we may not feel uh, uh, as if we are uh, we are forgiven and but we are making that choice but when we make that decision that god enables us okay uh, god really enables us he gives us the ability um when we when we say okay god i am willing okay uh, just want to share philippians 2 and verse 13 says for it is god who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure okay that's philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 it is god who works in you so god uh, we are giving actually that permission right when we say okay god you know this is what you're saying this is what you're doing so uh, he he works in us both to will and to do okay so our will becomes stronger you know that that i will you know, uh, i choose to you know that becomes stronger that decision making capacity becomes stronger so Okay, so we we uh, and to do right for for His good pleasure. So um, God works in us, right? The Holy Spirit works in us. So we come to that place of forgiving. We say, okay, I release forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit actually, you know, there's a deep cleansing. There's a sense of deep release and relief, uh, sense of God's peace. All that we experience in that moment. Okay, so and um, and even as we you know persist in forgiving, uh, God even you know, pours out a sense of love, right? Uh, uh, his love, his agape uh, in, in our hearts, right? And Romans 5.5 5 talks about that. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We already have it and God pours, you know, more of it. And uh, that love finds up expression where all trace of unforgiveness, you know, uh, dissipates or disappears. And in that place, we, uh, we, we are able to show, um, you know, being tender-hearted or, or kind um, to a, a kindness towards that person. Okay, so that's that's part A or you know, scene one. Okay, then what would happen is it you know, as we move from that, we are praising, worshiping, thanking God, and then you know, as we move from that place and get on to you know, journeying on, uh, what could possibly happen is certain events, you know certain places certain events certain conversations um, it could be anything that could you know trigger these events or memory of these events right uh, like somebody says something it triggers the memory of that uh, like for example you know when i think of this chocolate perk okay, it triggers a memory right where someone said something to me um, it was at the end of a church camp and it was the conversation was around that perk, so it triggers a memory, and it was not a pleasant conversation uh, because it was around that we were having that, and it was around that, so it triggers a memory. But the fact is that the, these memories would come, right? Because we our mind is capable of remembering uh, the minutest detail, so we remember. And for some people, we remember more, uh, some don't. Okay? Um, uh, so, Vishesh, I'll just mute your. Uh, if okay, done. So, um, so, yeah, so you know, we uh, we remember that. So, what happens is with that remembrance of that event, also floods in the memory, floods in the emotions. Right? Um, that is quite possible, right? Uh, because especially if the hurt is deep, so that doesn't mean that you did not forgive from your heart, right? But with that memory comes memory of that event floods in those emotions of that event right and then you you feel the pain you feel that anger uh you feel that that injustice right but at that moment the right thing to do is to say hey that is under the blood right i have made the choice and i have committed to god and i have released forgiveness that is under the blood you know, I'm not going to harbor this anymore. So that's a choice we, that's a decision that we make. Right? That we renew our mind to the truth. 
uh, we renew our mind to this truth that I have forgiven. I have forgiven as God in Christ forgave me. I have forgiven. Um, uh, I have forgiven others the way Christ has forgiven me. So, you know, we we do that, right? So, uh, and this might happen a few times. Right? It could happen a few times, but we deny ourselves the right to harbor, to meditate on our, you know, on our pain. We deny ourselves the right to, you know, to go over that over and over again. And say, you know, that is done. Yes, that is done. And I, and maybe you know another time also we could just bless right um, the Lord Jesus says bless those who um, curse you and then pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you so so we release a blessing you know God I, I release blessing and then emotionally also you come to a place of being stable and strong saying uh, okay you don't feel that anymore so over a period of time you all you always remember the event you always remember the what happened right but the, the the pain of it the emotions behind it that dissipates okay we get healed um and we receive healing that shame of that event the the scar of it remains you know that points to the thing but then um sometimes the lord heals even you know the healing is so uh so so powerful that uh, even the scar you know it becomes a testimony right so 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 that's how that's how it is so it's not that you have not forgiven you know you remember that you did make a choice you did consciously you know out of your heart you you forgive but um you you are alert now and you always go back to the truth and saying this is what uh, i did right does that help uh, Uh, Jeffina, does that uh, help? Does that, any other further questions? Yes, Pastor Jeffs. Yeah, okay, right. Okay, so um, let's uh, move on to the next one. If there are no other questions, I think I think this is a major challenge, right? You know, uh, you remember. Um, remember the good, we remember the bad. <laughs> so that's the thing. So we, you know, we need to forgive the others and and also you know forgiving oneself is also a, a very important aspect of it right releasing forgiveness over ourselves is uh, one way it's not like it's not narcissistic it's not you know glorifying the self no um it's when the lord forgives us you know, we have no right to hold something against ourselves we have no right to punish ourselves for something the Lord has already forgiven, right? He is faithful and just to cleanse us of all, all unrighteousness. So when he has cleansed, when he has forgiven, uh, who am I to hold that hurt and say, no, 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 I will hold on to this. Right? I will punish myself uh, because I'm, I'm still not worthy of his you know, forgiveness or whatever. The Lord counted you worthy. And that's why you know, he went to the cross. So um, forgiving oneself, forgiving ourselves is also an important aspect of staying emotionally whole. Um, because many times we are walking, you know, walking, limping uh, emotionally because we have not forgiven ourselves. What whom the Lord has forgiven, we have not forgiven, which is ourselves. So we need to we need to do that. Right. Okay. Okay, let's move on um, to the next uh, topic, which is uh, conquest of the mind. Okay, uh, so we've probably studied this, and um, you can also download Conquest of the Mind, uh, the book by the same title uh, from our website. I'll just also put it on the resource section, uh, but you can just download that. Um, so. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, you know what are the other aspect of things happening in our mind um, and uh, you know how our mind can be conquered okay. um, many times we think that you know these thoughts just come you know, these thoughts just come and i just run with it these thoughts come and i find myself doing certain things as suggested by these thoughts right. so 
uh, I'm a slave to these thoughts, right? But the fact is that um, the Lord has raised us up you know, as new creations. The Lord has raised us up to that position and place of authority where we can discard the thoughts that uh, that we don't want to. And we don't have to entertain all kinds of thoughts in our minds. Okay, So does that mean that we limit our creativity? Does that mean that we limit our ability to analyze and solve things? Well, not really, because that is what the world would have us uh, think. You know, that's a lie of the enemy. Like to be creative, that I have to be somehow perverted in my thinking. Like to be analytical, I need to you know somehow think immorally as well. Well, not really, right? Um, because um, look at God, look at the Lord Jesus, right? And uh, if you look at creation, the amazing amount of detail and creativity right has come from from him flows from god and uh, well we know that his nature is holy and that he's righteous and there's no there's no unrighteousness in him he's infinitely holy so creativity flows from him like wisdom of the highest order knowledge and understanding the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge and understanding it flows from him Right, so this this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is uh, you know it's from heaven, and and it is uh, it is it is not selfish, it is not uh, fleshly, because where fleshly ambition or selfish ambition is there, and you know, it opens the door to all kinds of evil. But this is holy, so we see that. Well, we see that example in God that. You know, the thoughts that he has for us, good thoughts, pure thoughts, holy thoughts, and his very nature is holy. And we see that he's infinitely creative. We see that his wisdom flows from him. So, uh, so also, it is possible for us to have uh, clarity in our thinking, to be, you know, in uh, to be as creative as God has, uh, you know, created us to be, and and uh, and not say, you know, I need to be twisted or perverted in my thoughts and thinking. So having said that, our mind, there is a battle for our mind. Okay. There is a battle for our mind. There's a battle that's happening. There's a spiritual battle. And uh, that battle is to capture our thinking. Right? There was a you know saying earlier, you know, he who has your mind has you. It was in the, all the advertising agencies, right? Uh, these they, you know, and they use the analogy like in your mind there is a chair, and whoever sits on that chair has you. Whichever product is sitting on that chair, you know, the minute you think about, let's say, breakfast cereal, if the, you know, you, for most of us, it Kellogg's is what comes right is in our mind. So, which means that uh, that company is actually um, well succeeded in sitting on that chair, right? If you're thinking of uh, soft drinks, and if you're immediately if you're thinking of either Pepsi or Coca-Cola, or Pepsi or Coke, you know, well, these these soft, I mean, these uh, so beverage giants have actually made their, uh, you know, are successful in putting that on the chair in your in your mind, in your thoughts, right? So your buying decision is is actually ruled by what's there in your thoughts, what's predominantly there in your mind, in your thought. Okay? So therefore, if you see, look at the. Products and services, which and goods and services, which are offered, all kinds of you know, advertisements, all kinds of visuals, ideas, invitations, you know, and in all kinds of media, whether it's billboard, whether it's print, whether it's you know electronic and social media and all that, there's all kinds of information that we um, that we are bombarded with literally to stir up our emotions. Um, in order to do certain things, you know, buy this, go to this place, have this, experience this, all kinds of things. Um, so we need to, uh, you know, it can be used for good and it can be used for evil. And uh, the prince of the power of the air, literally the air waves, uh, uses it to entrap, uses it to ensnare. Um, you know, a, a human being, so that even though we might be born again, 
But in this area of our minds, if you are not renewed, if we are not thinking right, we will live a very carnal, fleshly life, which is far, far lower than what God intends for us. And we know, we've read in the book of Romans, we see that to be carnally minded is death. Right? To be carnally minded, a carnal mind uh, is, is an enemy of God. Right? Is unable to do the things that God wants to do. It's it's the enemy of God, right? Okay, so um, so let's let's start by looking at um, you know this whole process of temptation. Okay, the the way these thoughts come and the way um, you know what happens from the thought level to the action, okay? from the thought to uh, when when we act on that thought, act on that idea. Okay, what is it that happens? You know, and we see this in James chapter one. Okay, James chapter one, verse thirteen to sixteen, um, says, "Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He Himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away, okay, by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Okay, so we see uh, you know, uh, a, a process that is laid, laid out there. We are tempted when we are drawn away. And how are we drawn away? By our own desires. Right? So we have these thoughts, we have these desires brewing inside of us. Maybe we entertain those desires. Okay, so there are good desires, there are bad desires. There are good desires which can be satisfied in bad ways, right, or inappropriate ways. And there are bad desires lead to, leading to bad, bad action. Okay, so each one is tempted when he's drawn away by these desires. It's our own desires. And what do these desires lead us to, draw us to? To be enticed. Okay, and the word used there is a snare. A scan, I think it's scandalion, a scan, scandalon in the, in the Greek, which means a snare. A, a trap, right? a trap which is typically used to, um, you know, trap an animal. Okay, so um, here in this case, it's just a desire, it's just a thought, but it's a powerful trap, right? It's ensnares, uh, the, the, in, in a, uh, in, ensnares a person to to kind of zoom in, to narrow in to that particular act. Okay action behavior but it's we are drawn away by this desire okay, instead and then verse 15 when desire has conceived okay, then it talks about is using the picture of uh, of human reproduction right? it's saying this conception there's birth and it's saying when the desire is conceived then it gives birth to sin. So desire, this conception, so which means there is a process there, there is maybe constant thought and uh, meditation on it and further desiring it. So when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, which means it's revisited, uh, maybe, maybe multiple times, or sin, when it is full grown, it becomes part of you, it becomes your lifestyle, uh, you become, you know, uh, uh, you know, as a believer, we're talking about as believers, we become prone to it. We, our will is so weakened that we are not saying no to it. Instead of fighting it, we are just going, surrendering ourselves to it. Sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Okay, so do not be deceived, my beloved children. So, so God's warning is this: that you know, this is the process. You're drawn away by your desire. So, how important? It is to be aware, to be mindful of the kind of thoughts that flow in our minds, right? So the kind of thoughts that flow, and what really causes those thoughts to flow? Okay, that's the bigger. That's the that's a real thing, right? What is it that influences my thinking? The, we are influenced by what we read. Maybe we are influenced by what we hear. We are influenced by what we see. Okay, um, so so we need to be careful. We need to be discerning. 
and uh, uh, because it has the ability to stir up our desires and our desires have the ability to draw us away we are drawn away from what we are actually some good things that we are doing we are drawn away and we are ensnared and um, there is that whole process of sin revisiting sin becoming a lifestyle sin becoming a pattern and that leading us away from the destiny that god has for us you know, bringing forth death okay so uh, hebrews puts it like this hebrews chapter 3 i think it says that uh, do not be uh, hardened by the deceitfulness of sin okay exhort one another daily while it is day and uh, do not be hardened uh, let me just read that verse um yeah um, hebrews 3 and verse 13 exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin so sin has this deceit deceit uh, uh, or you know this characteristic being being of being deceitful of cheating where we we justify you know, we reason we justify we say it is okay and we sometimes think oh it's you know there was there was one person who was actually justifying uh, justifying adultery by saying oh this is a gift from god you know this was a person uh, well not a believer no very much a believer so sin has this capacity to to really dull our you know reasoning uh, and uh, to deceive us right so we need to be mindful it can it can start as a thought and lead to death okay and uh, so we need to be mindful of that okay so the exhortation is when we read second corinthians 10 verses 3 and 3 to 5 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh okay for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ okay. so um so paul is referring to warfare and he, uh, you know he's saying that uh, hey, this has a lot to do with what's going on in your mind uh, what's going on in the realm of your thoughts right there are and there are you words that are used there strongholds arguments imaginations right things that are in the mind okay so where are we looking at it we see we are saying that okay our mind is a battlefield okay and uh, battles are won and lost in our mind right? in in our thoughts battles are won and lost so we better be alert, aware of the battle that's going on, and be aware that uh, you know this is what is intended for us. That we are created, designed to win these battles. That we've been giving resources to win these battles in the mind, right? So winning this battle is should be our lifestyle. The battle in the mind, uh, winning the battle in the mind, should be our lifestyle. Should be our privilege as a child of God. But it does not have happen automatically. We need to know what are these resources that we have been given. Okay. So one of the things that we need to understand is that the thoughts need to be taken captive. The thoughts need to be taken uh, as prisoners. So I don't know if you if you know that uh, you know famous song by Pink Floyd. You know, we don't need no education, right? Uh, it's called Brick in the Wall. And it has these lyrics, you know, we don't, we don't need no education. We don't want no, we don't need no education. The second line is, we don't need no thought control. Okay. So it's saying, I don't, I don't need you to tell me that this is what I want, need to think and this is what I, I should not think. I want to be a free person. I'm completely free and I want to think whatever I want to think. Well, the truth is that if you think whatever you want to think, then it's going to, you know, you're going to end up acting whatever you know is based on the thought so so the, the exhortation is that thought should be taken captive but the but the question is this you know can thoughts be taken captive we, we seem so powerless against the kind of thoughts that come against the thoughts that hit us can thoughts be taken captive okay let's look let's go through these verses again um 
2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. He's talking about spiritual warfare, which involves mind, which involves thought. So he's saying, though we walk in the flesh, which means that we are human beings, we walk in the flesh. Okay, so we are flesh and blood, we walk in the flesh. And then he says, we do not war according to the flesh. So which means that though we are walking as human beings, we do not fight the war that we um, have, the war that we are indulging in, is not something that we would fight according to the flesh, according aligning ourselves, agreeing, being in agreement with the ways of the flesh. Right? Verse four: For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not fleshly. These weapons are, which means these are not carnal, which means these are spiritual. Right? Mighty in God, powerful. Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, for casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Okay, so um, we, we continue with the same thought for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, mighty in God for casting down arguments. Mighty in God for, uh, for casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It is mighty in God for bringing every thought into captivity. So there we have it. The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God. They're not fleshly, they're spiritual weapons. So they're mighty in God for bringing into captivity, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay. So it's not a it's not a mind over matter kind of a thing, mental gymnastics, but it's you know it's a, it's an act of war, but but it's with the resources, with the weapons that God gives us. These are spiritual weapons, right? And some of these weapons, you know, when we look at it, we see that okay, it's it's so simple, and yet so very powerful. Okay, okay. So a stronghold. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a fortress, right? It's the weapons are mighty for pulling down strongholds. So, um, you know, strongholds, and it, obviously the whole realm that he's talking about is something in the mind, right? Arguments, every high thing or imagination, um, bringing every thought. So he's, he's talking about anything, everything to do with the mind. And um, it's a spiritual battle, right? So a stronghold is something, a fortress, something like a fort, right? Uh, a strong place, um, something that is something that is uh, entrenched right, in the mind. And praise God that the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Sometimes we think, you know, this one particular person I'm not able to forgive, or this one particular thing I'm not able to overcome. Why? Because it is a stronghold. And uh, well, there's no chapter and verse, but somebody put it like this, that a stronghold is a house or a fortress which is built with thoughts and arguments and reasonings and imaginations, right? Um, which is, I think, you know, practically, when you look at it, it makes sense because a stronghold is in the mind and it's built with thoughts. It is built with reasonings. It is built with imaginations. It is built with emotions, right? So there is a thought there and there's a reasoning why that thought should be there. And there's a very strong reason why you don't want to forgive, right? There's a and it's got memories, and uh, it's got reasonings, very strong logic, arguments why that person does not deserve forgiveness. And everyone else, I'm able to forgive, but that's a stronghold in the mind that I'm not able to forgive. I don't want to forgive, and there are strong emotions which are linked to it, right? So memory, emotion, imagination, emotion. Thoughts, it's logic and reasoning. It's like a, you know, um, an advocate who's just giving all those uh, logic, reasoning why we should not, right, uh, extend forgiveness. Why we should not extend forgiveness. So it's like a stronghold in the mind. But this can be brought down, casting down arguments, you know, very strong arguments for certain actions, justifying maybe this is who I am. And this is how I am built, and this is this is how I am. 
right? Uh, so don't try to change me. Don't try to tell me anything. This is how I am. Strong reasonings, arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself, you see that all these things are exalting itself, or exalting themselves, these arguments, these reasonings, against the knowledge of God. Okay, So the knowledge of God, meaning what God, who God is, what he has said, and uh, you know what he is saying about that particular situation, uh, about that particular behavior, this exalts itself and says, I know God says, but, right? It's like uh, how the serpent asked, hey, did God really say that, that you will die? Did God really say that? And that questioning and uh, trying to exalt above the, the knowledge of God. And well, surely you will not die exalting against the knowledge of God, above the knowledge of God. Right? So everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so we see that uh, we we have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We can we can and we ought to cast down, which means demolish, bring down arguments, imaginations, reasonings, uh, proud opinions, anything that is contrary to the knowledge of God, and to pull down every strongholds. Okay, so uh, we do this with the weapons that God gives us. You know, if these are not like we say, we're not psyching ourselves. Um, you know, we're not, uh, as we say, you know, affirmations, you know, some of these words which are used in, in social media and everything, you know, uh, like uh, cutting off God. God is not in the picture. Word of God is not in the picture. And, there's, and I'm saying that, okay, these are affirmations that you affirm and being mindful and all that, you know. Um, well, the weapon is the Word of God. So it's it's not a psychological thing. It's the word of God. We do what we need to do the way the Lord Jesus did when he resisted those temptations, when he resisted those suggestions that came from the enemy. What did he turn to? Whom did he turn to? He turned to what God had spoken. And he said, you know, it is written. He uh, he resisted the enemy by submitting to God. He resisted the enemy by going back to what God had spoken. Right? It is written. Right? So here was his invitation. Here was the suggestion. But he countered that with the word of God. <clears throat> Ephesians 6. Um, and when we read about um, uh, the weapons of warfare, the spiritual armor, Verse 17 talks about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. And uh, the Word of God, the word used there is rhema, which is the quickened Word of God. Okay, the Word God quickens His Word to us, um, He highlights that Word, makes it personal to us, and that quickened Word becomes the sword in our mouth. Okay, we wield the sword of God. Right? Uh, we use it in our, in our thoughts. We replace certain suggestions with that rhema word of God. Uh, tell ourselves, no, 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 this is what God says. Right? And we declare, we confess the word, because it's a word that can be spoken. It's a word that can be thought uh, or meditated upon. It's a word that can be proclaimed, declared. Right? We counter it with the word of God. That is why the, the rhema word of God is a sword of the spirit, sword which is given to us by the spirit to wield in times of battle. Right. Okay, so we'll stop here, and then uh, we'll continue in our next class. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Have a great weekend. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Bye. -bye.